This presentation was given to the Canyon City School Board of Education on the 15th of March for the purposes of trying to decide whether or not during the 2018-2019 school year, secondary education schools would move to a later school start time. The claim is that later school day for adolescents equals improved student learning and social emotional well-being. The agenda for this presentation follows three parts. First, we'll discuss the science behind the proposal. Next, we'll look at the community surveys that were accomplished. And finally, we'll go over the proposal itself. Let's begin with the science behind changing start times. This slide shows that adolescents need between eight and a half and 9.25 hours of sleep per night, and that seven out of 10 adolescents in the United States get seven hours or less per night. So the question becomes then, why does it matter? After all, most adults sleep far less than eight hours a night and they function just fine. For adolescents, however, this is a wrong assumption. Sleep is essential for health, daytime functioning, and well-being, and it's critical for learning, as the next slide will show. This slide depicts the average stages of sleep for a human being over a nine-hour period. REM sleep is highlighted with the red lines. In the first four hours of sleep, you can see the growth hormone is released, the brain recovers, and executive functioning is enabled. In the latter hours of sleep is where memory consolidation and thus learning are allowed to occur. If we take those times away from adolescence, sleep researcher Wendy Troxell puts it this way, we're literally robbing kids of their dreams by taking away their ability to learn. Arguments against a later school start time often go like this. Well, if my teen just turned off their phone, they'd be able to go to bed earlier and then wake up earlier. Or, we have a responsibility to train our students to be prepared for the workforce. The workforce starts early, therefore our students should start early. Here's why that doesn't work. The circadian rhythm of an average human being is depicted in this chart. It shows that at about 10 p.m., melatonin is released into the body, telling our brain it's time to go to sleep. That will allow us, if we're typical, to sleep between 10 p.m. and 7 a.m. Noted researcher Dr. David Souza also makes the point that elementary age students are more focused earlier in the morning. As a matter of fact, and specifically, pre-adolescent students have the same degree of focus at 7 a.m. that an adolescent student has at 8 a.m. This chart shows that adolescents, because of puberty, experience a circadian misalignment. And what it does is shift the melatonin release in the human body from an average of 10 p.m. a couple of hours later, 11 p.m. or midnight. Therefore, their brain is not being told that they're sleepy until that later time. Wendy Troxell basically says trying to tell a teenager to go to bed early is about the same as trying to tell a two-year-old not to take a nap in order to get them ready for kindergarten. Those of us that deal with adolescents note that the four bullets in the middle of this slide are often the result of sleep deficiency, non-compliance, aggression, hyperactivity, and poor impulse control. Deficient sleep in adolescents can also lead to poor attention, memory, and executive functioning, and also lead to weight gain. Most parents of teenagers also recognize the signs of sleep deficiency depicted on this slide.
those districts that have made the implementation of a later school start time have noted, noted the positives listed on this slide. Better academic outcomes, better attendance rates, higher graduation rates, reduced tardiness, less depression, less caffeine use, and fewer car crashes. In Fayette County, Kentucky, where the high school was pushed from a start time of 7.30 to 8.30 in the morning and middle schools were pushed from 8 a.m. to 9 a.m., their surveys and studies resulted in those students getting more than eight hours of sleep, moving from 36% to 50%, while there was a decrease in the number of motor vehicle crashes by 16.5%. Of note was the fact that students reported no change in the hours spent on homework, jobs, and sports activities. This slide depicts that in various studies spanning from a time period of 2002 to 2014, students do not stay up later when they're allowed to sleep in further. As a matter of fact, in some cases, they go to bed earlier. A noted Stanford study proved that athletes that get more than 10 hours of sleep a night improve their performance. The noted organizations on this slide all recommend that secondary schools in the United States start no earlier than 8.30 a.m. In Colorado, there have been several school districts that have already completed the move to a later school start time. There are three notable ones, including Canyon City, that are considering the move this, for this next school year. And there have been three that have considered the move, but due to logistics and financial reasons, they have decided to not do so at this time. It's also notable that the entire state of California and Maryland are both considering legislation to make it not possible to start high school any earlier than 8.30 or 8 a.m. Canyon City School Districts every other year takes the Healthy Kids Colorado report, which reports on topics such as drug and alcohol abuse, teenage preg pregnancy, and sleep. The last time Canyon City High School took this survey was this past October, and the results are on this slide. You can see that the percentage of students who have slept more than eight hours per night on an average school night is down at 28 percent. It's also both notable to see that as a student progresses from ninth to twelfth grade, they get less sleep. The overall take home message from the science behind the sleep study is first and foremost that sleep is essential for learning and health that our adolescents across the nation and here in our community are significantly sleep deprived and that changing school start times would be one of the strongest factors in improving that. And finally, that changing school start times does not coddle students but sets them up for success in life. The next part of this briefing moves us into the community surveys that were taken across several schools in the district. At Canyon City High School, 653 students were surveyed, the entire staff at Canyon City High School at 118 was surveyed, and 222 parents completed the survey. When asked the question, are you in favor of starting Canyon City High School at or about 8.30 a.m. and ending at 3.45 p.m., 407 students responded that they were in favor. That's over 60%. When they were asked what the primary concern with the later start would be, 197 of our students reported they didn't have a concern, 103 of them reported that after school work would be a concern, and 205 students said that after school athletics and activities is their primary concern. Our staff was split nearly 50-50 on whether or not they were in favor of the later school start times. Staff primary concerns surrounded after school athletics and activities. Our parents were the most in favor of the later start move. Nearly 65% of them 
supported it. Parents with a concern reported that it was primarily about after-school athletics and activities. Our elementary and middle schools also did surveys, although CES, Washington Elementary, and Canyon City Middle School did not do surveys because they're not affected or they saw this primarily as a positive move. At Harrison Elementary and Middle School, their 58 staff members were not in favor of the district move by 53%. At McKinley, with its 88 respondents, they were 57% not in favor of the district's overall plan. And Lincoln School of Science and Technology, with its 80 respondents, were 62% in favor of the plan. Put all together, there were 226 elementary and middle school survey results, and just under 50% did, said that they did not favor the district move overall. This brings us to the final part of this presentation, the proposal. This slide depicts the schedule that the Canyon City High School would follow if the proposal were passed. While this slide is fairly busy, it depicts the current and proposed school start and stop times for all schools in the district. A blow up of the Canyon City High School row shows that we would move from a 735 start time to an 830 start time. It shows when our stop times would be, the increase in the length of the day, on the bottom part of the slide, it shows that we would meet our state mandated required hours of 1,080 by a significant amount, 45.2 hours. The district's transportation department has come up with a plan to support the preceding slide that costs nothing additionally because there are no new routes required. If there were to be new, now, new routes, it would increase district transportation costs. Kansas City High School would be open at 7 a.m. next year for drop-off of students who do not ride the bus. We would also have a plan to put Wi-Fi on buses so that students could take advantage and do homework while they're traveling to activities and athletics. And for elementary school students, we've coordinated with both their principals as well as out side agencies to provide them with something to do after school while they're waiting for their older siblings to get out of high school and pick them up. For those students who are concerned about working after school, we will provide them with a professional and internship community experience or PACE which will allow them to leave school early to go to work or an internship and get high school credit while doing so. We also note that by providing every student with a computer next year, we give them a blended option of learning through a learning management system called Schoology. This will allow them to sign into their classes, communicate with their teachers, figure out what exactly they're missing in class, and be able to turn that in in a much more efficient manner. We took an in-depth look at extracurricular scheduling. What we found is that by pushing our match times to 4.30 and leaving school for matches in southern and northern Colorado Springs at the posted times, we would be able to pull off all matches without issue. Also of note, with the Wi-Fi and the buses and the learning management system Schoology, students would be able to do their homework en route to matches. We also talked to the band and the choir about any issues and they reported that they were fine with the later school start times. We've studied teacher coverages of classes for those teachers who have to leave, who are coaching for an acti activity or athletics, over the last two years. The numbers are on this slide. We will continue to monitor that in the future were we to move to a later school start time. Remember that blended learning also provides the teacher the ability to reach back into a class that he or she has left and give instruction to its students without actually being in the classroom. Practice schedules were something else we looked at. We uh, studied a lot of different options 
And what we found is that for the most part, practice schedules are not going to be negatively impacted. In order to ensure that activities in athletics wouldn't fill the void of a later school start time by practicing in the morning, we've come up with the language on this slide. And finally, because we wouldn't want to make this move and not, not be able to study or say exactly how it impact us, we will do data collection on all the items in this slide and study that over a three-year period. On April 9th, the Board of Education will host a public forum in order to hear from the public about their opinion of a later school start time proposal. After that, they'll make their decision.